message. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our October Possibility Talk with Art Possible Ohio. My name is Megan Feith, and I am the Director of Programs for Art Possible Ohio. We are the statewide service organization on arts and disability. Together, we make art possible. Um, Today we are presenting our Possibility Spot Talk series with artist Ron Shelton, which is a speaker series dedicated to highlighting artists um, in the art industry, um, sharing relevant information about their work, their struggles, their successes, their organizations. So we're just so thrilled to have Ron here today. Um, but before we get started and Ron gets started, um, I want to let you know about a few housekeeping things. Um, this is the Zoom format today, so if you are live with us today, um, we're asking that you keep muted. It's up to you if you keep your camera on or not. Um, but if you have questions over the course of our session today, you may ask them at any time. You can do this two ways. You can raise your hand, and hopefully I'll see you, and I'll, and I'll pause and, and recognize you, and you can unmute. Or you can type questions or comments in the chat box, and we will read them out so that Ron gets them or I get them um, and we can respond to them appropriately. I will also forgot to engage our captions, um, <clears throat> but you should be able to access captions if that is something that you need. So at the very bottom of your screen, a little bit to the right on that bar, there is a CC button that you can click and that will enable captions on your screen and then you can move those actually anywhere on your screen. Um, so that you can best see them. I want to thank the Ohio Arts Council, um, the Greater Columbus Arts Council, Columbus Foundation for supporting our speaker series today. We cannot do this work without them. And I want to thank our Art Possible Ohio audience, as always, for all their support, participation, and um, sharing out of exciting events like today. So to get things started, I am going to actually turn it over to Ron to introduce himself. Um, and I think he'll probably do it better than I can. <laughs> um, and Ron, I'm going to let you take it away. Okay. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ron Shelton. I'm an artist here in Cleveland, Ohio. I consider myself a multimedia artist. I've dabbled in art for as long as I can remember. Um, my practice now is exclusive, exclusively working with plastics. I, my, my practice has been, you know, focusing on the sustainable, stay sustainable art, sustainable lifestyle. Uh, I also am founder, director of a nonprofit called High Art Fridays. And actually High Art Fridays is where I got most, a lot of, it's like a catalyst for me. It's an international group of artists, artists all over the world. I started High Art Fridays on my face, first personal Facebook page back in 2013. Uh, and I and, and every Friday I would collect artists at the time I would collect artists just basically through Pinterest and this artists that I found and I would do these shows and I would like do these you know virtual shows and the popularity kept increasing people kept coming so we designed our own web, our own um, um, Facebook group higher Fridays and currently we have like eight, over 1800 members from all over the world and they the members have one thing I noticed about four or five years ago, there was members all over the world, specifically El Salvador, Ghana, uh, South Korea, the USA, and the UK that were like focusing, they were transforming plastics into art. And it was such a profound uh, uh, act that they, and most of these artists lived on like coastal regions that they collected plastic from the beaches and they made these incredible tapestries, incredible bodies of works that really had had a profound impact and it had impacted me and it impacted my craft. So at the time I was working with ephemeral uh, medium, namely uh, ice and chalk on slate. Like during the win winters are it's been very, very exciting for me. I, I've been running in winters for the past nine, nine winters and I was working with like, these ice installations. Uh, so that was you know really profound. But when I came across all these repeated uh, artists all over the world, you know, working with plastics, they're, and then they're addressing the environment, how damaging plastics is in the environment. There's over 140 million tons of plastics that disappears from the world's waste stream each year. And a result of that, these gyres and plastic islands in the, in the oceans are formed. Plastic is very, very devastating, and it has a very, had a very, very devastating impact on my, on my work. So I've been working with plastic for the past four years, 
creating these pretty large installations. Um, maybe if you can pop up the first the first screen, the first uh, image. I will, yeah. Uh, and alongside the sustainable lifestyle that I'm living, I Cleveland, Ohio recently received a large grant um, for, for, to initiate Circular Cleveland. And what Circular Cleveland is, is, is creating a circular economy in the Cleveland area. And what a circular economy is, keeping keeping materials out of the waste stream as long as possible. That what that means is refurbishing, rebuilding, reusing. So that's where I came in. You know, I have also been appointed as one of the nine circular ambassadors in Cleveland as a result. So I'm working closely with Sustainable Cleveland. One of my board members is a, a member of the Mayor's Office of Sustainability. She and I, her name is Kathy, Dr. Kathy Lynn. She and I have done a lot of collaborative works. Uh, I did a work, I do workshops in the community. Uh, I've been working with CMSD, Columbus Metropolitan School Districts for the past several years, teaching youth, you know, transforming plastic into art. I did, I forgot to bring us a slide in about the uh, plastic meeting that we've been doing. But this piece, this piece that pops up here is plastic quickly forward. It was part of my, one of my recent installations, part of uh, Can Triennial 2022. That show was, was uh, featured at the Praxis in the Waterloo Arts District. Uh, next slide. And this is actually a full scale uh, piece of the work. It's called DNA. Uh, these pieces uh, that are suspended from the ceiling are actually DNA sampling trays that were acquired from Cleveland Clinic. Hospitals generate a large amount of plastics and these trays I sort of deassemble them and reassemble them into these, these uh, forms. Um, and so they created I think a pretty interesting uh, installation piece where the forms are, someone said they look like closed eyes with like eyelids. So that's one of the pieces that I did recently. Uh, next slide. This here is a huge piece. It's like seven, seven foot by six foot approximately. It's called yellow mosaic. Uh, yellow is a color that I use frequently in my work. Uh, it just sort of came by happenstance, but yellow in my mind represents like caution or warning. So that's the sim symbolic metaphor that I sort of attached to the, the work in yellow. And these, uh, this piece here is created with three inch by three inch squares of plastic that I cut from laundry detergent bottles, tidy cat litter containers, anything yellow, I cut into three inch three by squares and wove them together with, with wire. Next slide. And this piece here is called Yellow Waterfall. Uh, this was how this piece came about. It was very, very interesting. At the time I lived in Lakewood, Ohio, and I walked out of my apartment one day and saw these, uh, ye these yellow shavings on the ground. And I was like, wow, yellow. I thought that this, because I had already started working with products in yellow. So to find out these shavings were a product of the uh, gas company, they were replacing the old steel pipes with polyethylene pipes. These polyethylene pipes are yellow in color. And when they size the pipe, they shave, they have the shaving machines device and they shave the pipes down to size. And these shavings were remnants of the, the, the sizing process. So I was going from site to site collecting these shavings. I would collect large bags of this stuff per, per, per site. So I had this um, woven, like woven plastic webbing and I wove shavings into the webbing. And this piece has been exhibited quite frequently. This is like, this is like the fourth uh, show that this piece has been in. Uh, it's like 30 feet by 15 inches. It's pretty long and pretty massive. And this piece here is part of Can Triennial 2018. Uh, this is, that, was my, that was my first participation in Can. Can is a jury selected show. That was the first uh, uh, participation in Can. I was also in this past can of 2022. This one uh, was at the 70 Street Art Studio in the hallway. It had a really profound impact in, the, in that space. Uh, and these again are these uh, three inch by three inch squares that I cut together from a variety of plastic. Laundry, laundry bottles was the main primary uh, source that I recruited from for this project. And I would, I would frequent laundry mats in, my, in Lakewood and I would gather these laundry detergent bottles and I would bring them home and wash them out. But then my apartment smelled like it was like, I, felt, I got kind of nervous about freaking this toxicity. You know, the, the, what we think is supposed to be smelling really fragrant and good, it, just, it was overwhelming. You know? So that was a really 
challenging uh, um, project, but I, you know, I like the results. And so this piece was, was had a really profound impact on our, on our community. And this piece here is a small piece. This, this uh, show, is in, this exhibit is in Anchorage, Turkey. Uh, it was in 2020, it, it exhibited there. So my work has traveled a, a little bit. I've had some shows in Belgium, France, Netherlands. So I had some, some exposure, international exposure. And this is one of, this piece is called Plastic Man. Uh, these little fragments, these little squares are very, very small. They're like about an inch or less inch by square. They're, they're different shut sizes, like trapezoid sizes. And they're all still composed. They're still, you know, joined together with by wire, woven wire. And they're all composed of laundry detergent bottles. And this here is another installation. This is probably one of the largest installations that I've done. That yellow waterfall is in this show as well. And it's the, the, the title of this piece is called Three Strikes, representing you know, where we are as far as our, our, our environment, our world. You know, we've reached the last point you know, of, of rescue. I, I think we're kind of at that place. And there again, the, the strikes are made of, they're like eight strikes here are eight feet in height. And they are made of dissected, reassembled, uh, tidy cat litter container uh, boxes. The litter container boxes I, I collect all over. People donate them to me. I have them all over my house, in my house outside in the lot next door. People might think I'm a junk man, but I collect these containers and I, as, as I need them, I, I cut them up and make them into a project. And the, one of the most recent projects which I don't have photos of is the piece is currently on display in Columbus at the Cultural Arts Center entitled The Earth Is Us, and it's artists all around, the, basically more primarily Columbus. I think I was the only person, artist outside of Columbus that participated in the show. It's, it's artists uh, call is to address the environment and to address the earth and what, what we can do. And it's like sharing the things that we can possibly do or just communicate narratives through our art to reflect the status condition that the earth is in currently. And this is actually one of my ephemeral pieces. This is one that I did before I started working with the, the never ending plastic, which is total dichotomy of you know, ice. These, these are ice, uh, water, you know, water was the primary medium of this, water and wire. Uh, I would freeze like bags, plastic bags of water and, and take these, these like kelts. And I call them kelts. And I would like wrap them in wire and hang them in sort of a mosaic, which is really, they, this is a pretty large piece. You really can't see the, get an idea of the dimensions. But this piece, it was so interesting making, working with ice. In Cleveland, the weather, is, it fluctuates so much. I really like cold winters and I really like lots of snow. I, I don't run unless it's snow on the ground. This past winter, we had lots of snow. I ran probably the most this, this past winter than I have in several years. Because you know the winters, it also represents sort of an environmental statement. How you know our warming, our, our winter seasons are changing, the global warming. So this sort of is also a sustainable uh, art practice too, even though it, it doesn't impact the art, impact the earth as as well. But it does sort of demonstrate the condition of our world and condition condition of our environment and how global global warming is impacting it. And it, it became very frustrating working with ice. I was always watching the temperature and when everything got below freezing, I'd, be, I'd speed process up. So it was really, really frustrating sometimes because of the way the weather would fluctuate. And I was even thinking about moving to a already visiting, staying doing a residency and it really all like a you know, all cold climate where I could have spend some time without being concerned about uh, the, the, what, the weather changing. This piece is another plastic piece. It's, it's called Yellow Plastic Fire. Uh, these are all like melted uh, uh, pill bottles. I mean, see the, the pill bottles we have we get from the pharmacy. These are all pill bottles that I've, that I've melted and strung them up on a, on a wire cylinder uh, uh, aperture. So this is called yellow uh, plastic fire. I think that is the end of the images that we have, Brian. Okay. Um, I will go back so folks can see your recent exhibitions are, are here. So I think this one just ended in August, right? At the practice. Right, it just ended, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been, I've been exhibiting quite a, a, a lot. Like in 2022, I've already had two shows. 
2021, I had like nine shows, which included a European tour. Uh, 2020, like five shows, which included the, the show in Ankara, Turkey. Uh, so I've been pretty, pretty busy exhibiting, actually overextending myself as far as my art and my practice. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I was going to ask how you keep up with it all, because that is, <laughs> that is a lot of exhibitions. I think professional artists the most um, often exhibit once or twice a year. So yeah. how are you managing? How do you manage it's, it's, that lifestyle? It's hard. It's, it's yeah. difficult. And the, the show in 2018, I, I ended up in a mental hospital. I just became, I, I, I'm diagnosed as bipolar, so I'm sure that has a lot to do with my artistic expression and also the downside of it as well, which it can be kind of devastating. I, I over, I overdo things, you know, I overdo my art and sometimes it, it gets the best of me and I have like, you know, it's like a breakdown. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it is a double-edged sword as far as creativity, you know, working with under this, this, this uh, having a dis disability does have, you know, pretty serious, serious Im imp impact at the time. Yeah, I imagine does. Has, I know that you said that it, um, you know, it can put you into overdrive sometimes having this, having, having your disability. How does it impact your, your art making? And I mean that in terms of what you're creating, your skills, you know, your skill development and things like that. Does it ever impact um, uh, I, I think you make? It really doesn't. I don't. I don't think it impacts. If it does, it's some some subliminal way. You know, I, I create just like anybody else creates. So I don't think my disability has mm -hmm. that kind of impact on what how I create, maybe mm -hmm. how I create, but what I create. So yeah. I was. I would say it really doesn't have. Well, yeah. I can't say it does, but it does. <laughs> but it doesn't. Yeah, that's not exactly what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you kind of addressed a lot of the questions that I had um, outlined for you, but working with all these different kinds of materials, specifically plastic, um, how's your work evolved from like when you began working with plastic to what you're doing now, which is, you know, working with plastic all the time. I'm sure it's, you know, it's a new material. I know you're experimental. Um, yeah, it, it, it actually is evolving. Uh, like, like I shared with you, the, 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 I started working with the laundry detergent bottles and the smell became overwhelming. So I knew that I would not be working with laundry detergent bottles, you know, more <laughs> because it, I was being really concerned about my own health, what I was breathing in, even though I washed them thoroughly, you know, that smell mm -hmm. just retains in, in, the, in the plastic for, forever. Well, you could even smell it in the hallway at 78th Street Studios for like a year. <laughs> the smell, it was really a nice smell, but, but you can say still the smell just permeated the plastic. Oh, it just yeah. stayed there. So. Yeah, but right right now I've been teaching um, higher Fridays, which is you know we're five hundred one c three. I have been teaching. I've been working as a teacher through Art House, and I've been going to several schools in the Cleveland Metropolitan School District. So I've been teaching students plastic bag weaving. That's we've been doing plastic oh. weaving for the past three years. Uh, I'll, I'll actually get one of the panels. Okay, here. that'd be very cool. Hmm. These are several of the panels that students have done in the Cleveland Metropolitan School District. Uh, the panel oh my here. It's amazing. And this is a panel. They they get really creative. And what I do once I get all these panels collected, I sew them together in a huge tapestry. So I have several really large tapestries. They're probably like eight feet by four feet in length. And that's my my goal is to keep making these. Um, plastic mats through we have handmade looms that we you know make them are hand they're handmade and they it's pretty sort of a, a crude weaving technique I never I haven't never I've never done any weaving prior to this so I'm not I don't consider myself a weaver but I you know the students you know, enjoy it and it's, it's it's really it can be quite tedious but I think it has an impact it cause sort of it's a calming has a calming effect on the kids once they start really they really get into the practice of weaving. That's very cool. And, um, you know, talking about that, what kind of, um, where are you sourcing? I know you mentioned you, you, people donate plastic to you, having to find plastic sometimes they uh -huh. think come to you. Um, where do you, you know, what, what more unusual places have you sourced plastic? I said you said you work for the pharmacy. 
Um, yeah, you dig uh, into trash cans. I mean, a lot of our <laughs> I yeah, but, yeah, yeah. The, the, the most the most uh, work was when I went to the laundry detergent and you know, when I worked work with laundry detergent bottles. I would actually go in the trash cans at these laundry mats and pull the trash, pull the <laughs> bottles out. So that that was the most that was my that was my first major installation was doing that. So I've kind of wised up a little bit. And the, the tidy cat litter containers are really, really handy. I, I have them, I use them to carry my art supplies in through my workshops. Yeah. Uh, I, I cut them up, you know, I have a pretty sturdy saw that I use to cut them up and dissect them and, and, and make them into different different um, schematics. So what about materials that are more malleable? I'm assuming like well, for weaving, you know, you plastic like that. These yeah. these are these are all constructed of you know plastic bags you get from the grocery store. Oh, okay, so, so there's, there's bags, definitely yeah. yeah the, so this is my main medium now. So bags and even it's so ironic how Cleveland is, has been trying to have to pass a plastic ban bag ban for the last several years. And it was it was about to go into effect right before COVID. It did go into effect right before COVID came out came, came about. And the, the the plastic associations, the plastic industry, they proposed they constructed this letter to the government saying how plastic helps prevent the spread of COVID. They just created this whole new wave. So then those entities that had already started to transition out of plastic, they went back to using plastic because they got this misinformation from the plastic industry that. But plastic does help prevent the spread of COVID, you know, so which was really interesting. And, you know, I, I am all for, you know, the plastic bag ban, uh, it, you know, but right now I've become dependent upon bags to, for, for my art. Uh, so it's just an ironic situation that I find, my, I find myself in. Well, I imagine if the bag ban went through, you could still do a call for plastic bags because I think we all have closets. Yeah, yeah, we have, have tons of plastic, plastic bags. Yeah. Happy to share with you. Um, I think that's really interesting how you create kind of art and projects based on like, um, you know, what is kind of presenting itself to you in terms of plastic. Right. Um, and then, you know, in the moment, really, um, I think that's super cool. Um, so can you talk a little bit more, like you've developed this High Art Fridays organization, you work, um, you know, within the school system as a teaching artist. How, uh, how do you connect with your community? Um, and how do you bring your art to uh, the, the people who are around? Um, well, one of the most recent ways I connected was I Hired Friday has received several grants. One of the grants was through the Cleveland Neighbor Up a grant. It was a community grassroots um, grant project. And I live in, I bought a house, recently bought a house a couple of years ago in, in Cleveland Fairfax neighborhood, which is just a stone's throw from the Cleveland Clinic. So I, this grant here, so I've been working with schools in this area. There's a Cuyahoga uh, Justice Detention Center, which is just not in the community. I've been working with the Fairfax Renaissance uh, CDC. Uh, so, it, you know, I was actually appointed one of the, one of the board members at the Langston Hughes uh, uh, Cleveland Clinic Community Health Center uh, a little while back, but I had to, to step back from that position because I was, I was like sort of overloading, overloading myself, which I have a tendency of doing. I, I do too much stuff, and then all of a sudden it gets to me, and I got something has to mm -hmm. um, something has to give. So I'm really active, like right, working with Walton Elementary School, which is like five minute like walk from me. So I'm, I'm really starting to work there, um, working with the kids, doing the plastic bag weaving. We're actually also painting, drawing on plastic. Uh, we're also doing like journaling, to, you know, art journaling as well. So we're doing a sort of a multi-tasking multi things at, at the schools right now. Very cool. Thank you. Um, well, uh, that's amazing. And I should mention that I haven't yet. Ron is actually an artist. We have an exhibition that we put out every year called Accessible Expressions Ohio. And Ron actually has... Um, an artwork in that current exhibition. Um, it will actually be on display in Cleveland soon at the Beck Center for the Arts if you wanna go see it. Um, so you've talked a little bit about your evolution as an artist, your art forms. I know you used to make hats, you worked in ice, <laughs> you worked in plastic, and clearly you're very passionate about that uh, now. Do you see yourself, um, oh, would you be surprised if, if some other material presented itself to you and you felt like, you know, you would need to move in a new direction. Yeah, I, I, I'm honestly always change, change, changing and moving in different directions. You know, the medium has a big impact on me. So I'm hoping, you know, welcoming other mediums to come. 
you know, High Art Fridays is, is a global, art, art, global network that utilizes art to bring about social change. That that's, is kind of like our mission. It's mm-hmm. like a re revised mission statement. It's like, you know, art, I, I feel art is, is wonderful. And I see art more than just an aesthetic you know, tool, but, but art as a means to communicate, as a means to mm-hmm. you know, uh, bring awareness. And I think art has that great power to do that. And, and I, I think my artistic practice will not be the same. It will not be just for merely for aesthetic purposes, but it will, it will be for, you know, bringing about some type of change in our society. And I, I think that's what a lot of the artists of, of who are members of Higher Friday, they also have that same ideology. If someone wanted to get involved in High Art Fridays, how would they go about it? Is it an open group? Uh, it's pretty open. We have a Facebook group page. You can just Google High Art Fridays and our website will come up. And I'm sure there's links to our, our Facebook. Uh, we have a Facebook page and a Facebook group. We have, haven't, have don't have much of a presence on uh, LinkedIn yet or um, Instagram. We do have a presence on Instagram, but it's not active. Mm-hmm. I'm in the process of revamping stuff and getting 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 another grant to get some staff to help help out with that. So awesome. that's great. Well, Ron, we're about at the half an hour point. Um, I am going to just see if any of our participants beyond me have questions for you, or if there's anything that you want to share, anything else you want to share out, you are welcome to do so um, at this point. Okay. Lori's got her hand raised. Lori, do you want to go ahead and ask? Hi, Ron. How are you? Hi, Lori. It's nice to see you. Yeah. I'm so sorry I'm late for your talk. I've been like waiting for it. And I actually got on it a couple of Uh days ago. And it was like, the talk doesn't start for two more days. "Ah." And we met, didn't we meet at at, uh, uh, our opening? Yeah, with your son. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We sure did. I love your work. Yeah. Um, and I just think it's really exciting the work that you're doing with kids. I'm trying to do a similar thing um, uh-huh. and um, really interested in, you know, the uh, the plastics that you're using, you're sourcing from your environment, the idea of asking people to join and sourcing from their environment is this idea of kind of pulling the plastic out of the environment mm-hmm. into and bringing it into this kind of this kind of intentional way. So that's really lovely. I'm, I'm curious. I have a material question because I'm an artist and you know, I've been I've been uh, looking at plastic for a while, and um, I'm wondering, have you used heat and melting uh, yeah, with plastics I, much? And what is what have you what have you discovered with that? Um, it's 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 sort of a magical process, but the, when the heat is applied to plastics, it emits very very toxic rays. Uh, as it goes into the environment, so it's not it's something that I try to avoid. You know, and I do have a respirator when I wear it. But it, you know these chemicals are emitted into the environment, into the air. So it's not, I just, even though the results are magnificent, <laughs> but uh, I, I just kind of stray away from it because of that, that, that adding heat, you know, t- to it just doesn't, isn't a good mix. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't work well. It works well, but Absolutely. it just isn't a good pro- pro- practice. That's, that makes a lot of sense. Not really Is sustainable. <laughs> It's not sustainable and yeah. it's highly toxic. And yeah. so you wove in plastic, but are there other kinds of treatments that um, uh, that have also um, played with the malleability of it as a material? Well, it's, it's hard without applying heat. You know, heat does make it more malleable. That's, that's why I just basically cut it and assemble it in sort of a collage-like yeah. format, which is even cutting it, even using a saw, like, you know, I tried to... to arrest, you know, to, to, to capture the particles. I don't, you know, what animal birds thinking that's food. So I'm always thinking about this, these things, what happens in the process of making it, how can I prevent this from going into the, to the, way, the waste stream? So I, I don't want to be contradictory of what I'm doing. So I'm trying to always be mindful in, in every practice that I to do, make sure that I'm really being cautious about it not spilling out into the waste through, through other means. So. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, I look forward to seeing more work at it. Those were really beautiful uh, weavings that you were showing. Were those yeah. the, the students' work? Students' work, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's gorgeous. Thank you. So how's your son doing? <laughs> well, he's doing great. Um, uh-huh. We're 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 collecting things from our the, the streets around us and trying uh-huh. to make stuff right now. 
Um, so I'd, I'd like him to see some of your work sometime soon. Okay. I, really I was really it. impressed with that piece he did at the, the uh, opening. It's really, really nice. Very, very nice. Thank you. Yeah. He loves drawing. Very, very, very talented. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Arlo sold the piece too, which is oh, Wow. Yeah. Cool. Oh. Um, yeah, I had, I like that question, Lauren, because I was also thinking about, you, you talked about how you had a saw to cut some of those harder plastics. Right. I was thinking yeah. about like how hard it might be on your, your arms and hands, like working with strong plastics, getting cuts and things like that. And then yeah. to learn how to I, navigate that. Yeah, I developed some, art, maybe a form of arthritis in my thumb just by cutting it. Because I, I started cutting the thicker plastic, then I got a saw and started using a saw. But cutting, you know, even the laundry detergent bottles, which are it's a softer, you know, thinner plastic, but cutting the heavier, I was, I started out cutting heavier plastics with, with hands, with some really durable scissors, but my thumb just got messed up from it. So I had to be, so art, art can, can be um, damaging, art, you know, art can have damaging impacts on us, our health, you know, that's, that's a, a trade-off, making art can be damaging i mean if, if it's if it's like you know the from the toxic fumes of the uh, oil paints you know the, the is it whatever it is it can it has has potential to be quite you know harmful and for, for our health yeah so you always have to be keeping that in check as well when you're yeah it's kind of an irony isn't it mm. yeah <laughs> absolutely um, can you talk a little bit like uh, this is just me gathering this information. I mean, you said that you used to make hats and I know you for our exhibition, you created this beautiful jacket that everybody everywhere it goes. Everybody loves the jacket. Um, is fashion and like an important part of your art making or has it been in the, in the past? Uh, well, it has, you know, wearable art. You know, it is. I'm passionate about it. And I and I won't because I started making hats and we actually did a, a project making these art hats. And I did, I did the first series of art hats um, with third graders at a school here in Cleveland. And it had such a profound impact that I took it to a global level. I had artists in, who were members of Hired Friday create art. I shipped out these, these wire forms and to artists in uh, Salvador, Ghana, South Korea, the UK, and artists in, who, who lived here locally. And they embellished the, the hats, these forms with plastics in their community and they shipped them back to me. So, but that has been, we had a big show at the Beachwood Community Center last, I think it was last year. It was really, really profound. This the type of work that was done, you know, from the third, third graders were, were like the catalyst for this project. And it was so wonderful working with them and just how they, their creativity was just uh, remarkable. So that's another project that I will also instill. So, so fashion, wearable art has always been a part of my practice in a sense. So, you know, I will constantly be developing that as a uh, expression. I'm, I'm currently, I currently have an uh, internship uh, at Zygo Press. I don't know if you have heard of Zygo Press here in Cleveland, but I'm actually, I'm silk screening on plastic. And actually this, um, well, it's kind of hard to pull out and show, but I'm silk screening on plastics. I'm gonna make one of my jackets out of the, the silk screen plastic sheets that I'm working on. So. That's, so I've been doing that for the past several several months, um, and an, an artist, a New York a New York artist who recently did, who did an installation here at the Sculpture Center, it, she part of her installation has these sheets, huge sheets of plastic, uh, both opaque sheets and clear sheets, and I took asked the curator the director if I can have them, so she's going to give them to me, so I'm going to repurpose that. You know, instead of the, I'm sure it would have ended up in a, in a landfill. So that's I refused to buy it because I was going through a furniture company getting these large sheets of plastic. And when I saw it, I said, like, wow, this is a perfect sword. So she's going to give me that, you know, and I'm going to create these a lot of garments out of out of it. And I was thinking about doing a marketable, like rain, some rain gear out of these plastic pieces. That is that is super cool. I'm so glad to hear that you're doing that. And I know more artists are working on wearable art. We're really trying to like you know, for our exhibition, that was one of the, a new category of art right. um, for us because um, I think people tend to to shove that into the craft, you know, facet of art making, which uh -huh. I consider craft art making, but um, really kind of, you know, trying to normalize that as fine art. Um, that's really cool. Uh, I love hearing about all the places you get your plastic around. I think it's yeah. fascinating. And I'm, unfortunately, I'm sure it's endless. Um, endless. The that you can do. Yeah. But, 
really incredible. there was a, there was a scene in in the graduate i don't know if you've been with Justin hoffman he played yeah. a young guy there's a scene in the graduate that this one one of his family friends came up to him and says i have one word to say to you because the guy had just graduated from high school he said plastics that's that's it that and, and then you know that was profound this was like in 19 late 60s plastics had just kind of really entered the mainstream at that time you know so and for him to say that you know 30 years ago it's like it was like right. the precursor you know and that's and if, if Dustin character I forgot his name if he had actually gotten into it, he could have been a millionaire right now because yeah. the plastic industry has really skyrocketed you know I, I know it impacted my, my family you know directly I recall we would get the milk from the milkman every Saturday. He would truck. He would give us these glass gallon bottles of milk with the little paper sealed caps on top. Mm -hmm. And I remember one day he comes with these like plastic two and a half gallon containers. You know, we were like, "Wow, this is revolutionary!" And believe it or not, that was like forty years, forty fifty years, years ago. That plastic is still present. That plastic from that container is still present in some form. You know, so that's how long that stuff lasts. It just doesn't go away. It takes hundreds of years for a total biodegrade. It never does. Yeah. Uh, well, um, Lori, do you have anything else you want to ask? Or any or we... Well, I was just posting something about bioplastics in the chat because um, I was oh, looking sorry, at. I didn't see it. Um, I'm sure you've looked at those quite a bit, Ron, just all the right. different bioplastics that have been coming out and these ones that are, uh, they're starting to like, um 3d print with algae and or just like all these different films and uh workable films that are being used for dressmaking and um because oh, it's all just really really fascinating how, how quickly it, that's bioplastics are changing uh with the kind of materials that we use um I mean, just and poly their polyester you know but i mean like plastics that like literally dissolve off your body in like a day you know wow. I, or you know that have this kind of temporal quality to them and thinking about like a like a wedding dress that like dissolves on your body like through the ceremony and you're not wearing it anymore at the end or you know it's just interesting to think about it as something that has still stays with us as you were just saying like these plastics that have stayed with us and now how bioplastics has turned it to like these very temporary almost momentary uh kind of artworks as well i have to look more into that <laughs> yeah well, it'd be <clears throat> definitely be, you know it's similar to your experience working with ice i guess if it's something that you know can evolve so quickly mm. um that's pretty cool yeah huh I think, I think it's algae that I was specifically talking about. There's these like algae plastics. That, okay, so it's not really, really plastic, right? It's, so it's not. It's not really like, plastic. Yeah. Now they call it like bioplastic, but it's uh -huh. not really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But if you were to search it for the internet, if you look for algae, uh -huh. um, bio, uh, what would what, what they call it? It should pop up if you. There's a uh, artist who makes dresses from sheets of algae that they. Okay. Huh. they print it'll come yeah. up pretty quickly very cool well, I know dr I dr richard kirby uh out of the uk he filmed uh a plankton digesting a micro microplastic the ocean <gasps> oh how a, cool yeah smallest. that's where life begins pretty much in the ocean is a plankton he filmed a plankton digesting a microplastic which was like such a profound so just you know, Google Richard, uh, Richard, Dr. Richard Kirby, and you'll you'll uh, you'll see it. Plankton. Definitely, that sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I think um, Ron, unless you have more to share, or Lori, and anyone else wants to throw anything out, I think um, we might be at the conclusion of the talk for today. Um, Ron's website is up here www.highartfridays.com. I'm sure you can be contacted with your website, Ron. Yes. Um, you can reach out to us at Art Possible Ohio and we can help you get in contact with Ron if you have more questions or um, you're interested in some of the works that he's doing. Again, Ron's work is on view currently at the Cultural Arts Center in Columbus, Ohio as part of the Earth is, Earth is Us exhibition um, that was on October 29th. So there's still plenty of time to see it. Um, additionally, um, his jacket will be on view at the Beck Center beginning in early November. We'll have more information um, in our newsletter and social media about that. So if you want to go visit his jacket, 
um, you can do so. And apparently Ron is on view many places. So I imagine if you go to his website, you can find all the other wonderful places that you can yeah. do work. Uh, Ron, thank you for being here today. This was wonderful. Your artwork is incredible. Everybody raves about it. It's so unique um, and important. Uh, the mission behind it is significant. And so I'm really, really excited about working with you more, um, seeing what you produce. Um, is there anything else you want to say today? Otherwise, um, I think we'll say have a great weekend. I think weekend. That, that should okay. be it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, we, we've, we've enjoyed it. Um, yeah. And thanks for everyone who's here today and Lori for your great questions. Um, I think at this point we are going to say goodbye to all and I hope you all have a lovely fall weekend. Thank you. Bye. Nice seeing you Thank again, Lori. You. Nice to see you, Ron. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>